Welcome back, everybody. I was out running errands one day, and I decided to swing into the dollar store to see what toys they had. Uh, I came across this Captain Marvel, which was definitely something that I could work with. Excuse me, Captain, please put your arms down. You're a little too excited. I did buy two because of the way I was going to tackle this project. It might end in failure, so I wanted to make sure I had a backup. And I put them away for a later date. Not even a couple weeks later, I spoke with someone who enjoys my videos, and I asked her what she would like to see on my channel moving forward. Coincidentally, one of the things that she brought up was Captain Marvel. Now let's get into it. I wanted to try something different with this project. Burning my fingertips off. I wanted to try to keep this figure intact as much as possible, but obtain the pose that I was looking for. I was going to melt my way into what I wanted. Ah, you mother. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I want to keep making more of these videos, and your support means a lot. Thank you. This toy was made from two different types of plastic. Her head and her arms were made from a more pliable plastic, and required a longer cooldown time to ultimately set in its final position. Her body was made of a more melty type plastic that once heated, you could move it into position and then it would solidify almost immediately. And also really good to burn yourself on. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Getting her in that right position that I wanted her in took a little bit of muscle, a little bit of my fingertips, a little bit of glue, but I ultimately got there. I was talking to my friends over at Funky Games. If you want to go check out their channel, I put a link up top as well as down in the description. Steven suggested that I try something new and different since I've tried something new and different with each of my projects. What I came up with was to incorporate wireless LED lights into this project. Captain Marvel produces photon energy from her hands and her feet. I don't know if she produces it from her feet, but she can fly, so I guess that works. And I wanted to be able to mimic this with the wireless LEDs. I decided to give her the old Star Wars treatment, and from there embed the LEDs into her arm, and then replace her arm with a clear resin version allowing the LEDs to shine through, mimicking the energy that she's producing from her hands. The next step to making that happen was to get a molding kit to mold her arm. Since I had already repositioned one of them, I didn't want to screw that up in any manner, so I used the secondary Captain Marvel as the guinea pig for the molding experiment, since I've never made a mold before. I'll save you the trouble of having to watch this whole process through twice. After deciding her whole gauntlet should glow and not just her hand, I had to go in with Putty and fill in the random holes in her forearm before I could move forward. In total, I poured two different molds and did about six different resin castings. Uh, some came out cloudy, some came out with too many bubbles. I even tried tinting it at one point. Ultimately, I came out with one clear hand that was more acceptable than the rest. I should come up with some weird project for the slew of clear right hands that I have. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. You remember that Star Wars treatment I was talking about? We're here. No, not episode three. We're not on Mustafar. But episode five, of course. From here, I needed to drill into her arm and make a cavity for the LEDs that I was gonna embed in there. 
I'm not going to bother showing you this twice, since I end up doing it again once I cut more of her arm off. I got out the putty again to fill in the already posed Captain Marvel's left arm, the hole in her back, which I assume was for some sort of backpack or something, as well as under her right arm where I ended up gluing and cutting. That way I could go prime her and get her ready for painting. This is also the time where I cut more of her gauntlet off and redrilled the cavity for the LEDs. During this process of putting these LEDs in and out of her arm and testing them repeatedly, I ended up damaging some of the copper coil that was wrapped around them. Not even moments after filming this, I ended up breaking one of the white LEDs that I wanted to use. But at this point, they look great and are working exactly like I want them to. Now it was time to start working on the base. I had an original concept in mind that I wanted to do. Do you think that's where I started? No! I went off the rails and started designing a whole bunch of different things. You know that phrase, Hot Mess Express? That's pretty much what this base creation turned into. I just dumped foam on my desk for no reason. I created things like this. I cut a bunch of foam bricks and made things like this. And like this. And like this. And like this. And like this. I didn't know where I was going. What I should have just stuck to was my original concept which was just going to be her punching through a wall or a big rock, which I ended up going with anyways. But wow, what a roundabout way to get there. I did decide to keep the brick pattern and incorporate that into the final design. Uh, I needed to soften the bricks so they didn't have such a hard, fresh cut edge. So I put them in a bag with a bunch of rocks and I shook the crap out of it. It worked really well, actually. And it was really loud and obnoxious. I glued together and broke some of them in that traditional brick pattern to get the look that I was intending. Now that the original concept was back on track, the idea was to sandwich the copper coil inside a piece of foam and make a hole through the middle of that, which would be where she punched. Her arm would be through the hole, which would, in turn, make the LEDs glow and make her hand glow. Now it was just a matter of putting all those pieces together. I sliced this piece of scrap foam that I had off camera. Unfortunately, I don't have a hot wire table yet, which would have made this whole process a whole lot easier. From there, I had to measure out where I wanted the copper coil as well as the small housing for the components. I tacked everything together with hot glue and made sure the position of everything was exactly where I wanted it. I then went in and carved a channel out for the USB cable that will power this whole thing. I test fit everything again just to make sure it looked good. And then I also marked and drilled the hole through the base for where the USB cable will be fed through. I made sure everything was in its place and gave it one final look over because once this thing was glued together, that was it. There's no going back. I glued the top pieces down and marked the center point of where the coil was so when I punched through, I wouldn't ruin it. While I was letting the glue dry, I rolled a ball of tinfoil over the surface to give the foam some texture. The moment of truth. 
Did I measure this right? Am I going to break the coil? Looks like I measured correctly. The next step was to expand the hole that she punched through, as well as to expand the hole on the back to make it look more blown out from the force of her punch. I also snapped off a couple pieces on the top and added some guitar strings as makeshift rebar to hold them in place to make this wall look more destructed. I also bought clear acrylic tubes so I could cut them down to varying lengths so I can add flying debris coming off the back of the wall from her punch. I went over the whole piece with epoxy putty, sealing up all the gaps and adding some extra texture. While that was drying, I put it aside so I could start painting Captain Marvel. I primed the figure off camera, but also realized she needed some sort of stability while standing on this foam that glue wasn't going to provide. I had some extra threaded rod lying around, so I drilled a hole through her foot and screwed that into the bottom. I drilled a corresponding hole in the base to lock that rod into place once the whole piece was together. I then moved on to painting, which took a stumble right at the beginning. I bought a metallic blue and red that I thought were going to land much darker than they actually did. This goes to show that you should always test your paints first, because if not, you're going to have to paint it twice. I went back out and got the blue that I actually wanted, and I had to mix the red to get it to the color that I wanted it to be, but ultimately I got there. I tried not to deviate too far on her paint job. I looked at a lot of reference and tried to keep it true to the comic books and movies. I wasn't paying attention, and as you can see, I accidentally hit her already painted face with the brush, so it looks like she's got blood smears on her face. I contemplated leaving it, but not the look and feel I was going for with this piece. This, in my mind, was more pre-battle intimidation or trying to save somebody, not mid-battle. This is why I chose not to weather her as well. She's stepping on the battlefield in her freshest gear and not have an ounce of dirt or grime on her. I know some may not like or appreciate that logic, but every image that I looked at, whether it be in the comic book or from the movies, she was crisp. So I was going to leave this paint job crisp. And it's okay. It's just a toy. Remember, play thing to display thing. Speaking of display thing, it's time to finalize that base and get it painted up. After adding the rod into her foot, I had to make some minor adjustments to the bricks to come up to meet her foot so her hand would be on the right place on the wall. It added a little more damage to the bricks, which was a nice touch. I added some foam underneath for some extra stability, and then I glued everything together. I sealed all the foam with Mod Podge mixed with black paint because I didn't want the rattle can primer to eat the foam. Once the primer was dry, I used a dark gray acrylic paint as my base coat. I also painted a few bricks different colors to give some color variety. I then went over all the rocks 
with a couple passes of dry brushing of lighter and lighter gray colors. Once the first coat was dry, I went over it with a homemade black wash. For some reason, it dries kind of shiny in some places. Uh, I think it's the medium that I used to make it. I went over everything again with a dry brush just to dull everything back down. And I called it good. I gave the same paint job to all the debris rocks that were flying off the back, and then I attached them using UV resin. This stuff is my new favorite go-to. Now that both paint jobs were complete, I sprayed them down with a clear coat to make sure that the paint jobs were protected. And this is where things got funky. Since I was already down to one white LED, and I needed two, I placed an order for another set. That order never showed up, so I had to reorder them, and the ones I got were too small. After four days of waiting to put this all together, I just decided to use one blue one and one white one. And somehow I ended up breaking the other white one. No! Now I have zero white lights and only two blue ones. Since now I have no white lights, I had to go with the clear version of her hand and use the blue lights. After watching clips from Endgame, her hands tend to land in the blue color when they're doing their thing. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not that terrible. So as to not break the last two that I have, I heated up her arm so it was a lot more pliable, and I was able to put both lights in without breaking them. Let's see if they both light up. Oh, it help if I plug it in. I used that UV resin again and stuck her arm into place. I assembled all the pieces. I used some Gorilla Glue to lock everything into place. And we were done. Let's go to the beauty shots. If you stuck around this long, thank you. I truly appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the notification bell and the backflip button and all the other things so you know the next time I post a video. Thank you again and we'll see you next time.